Julian would have hated it, but paradoxically, he was one of the main reasons Christianity eventually triumphed, politically speaking, over the Roman world. He was terrified the Christians might win, and he accidentally sped up the process. Flavius Claudius Julianus was born to great privilege in the final years of the reign of his uncle, Emperor Constantine the Great. Constantine was the first Christian emperor, and officially his policy was toleration of all the religions, including the Christian faith, of course. And during his long reign from 313 to 337, uh, the churches really did flourish. Julianus, Julian, was raised in this Christian context and he got the best education money could buy, which in that period included Christian education as well as the Greek and Roman classics. But eventually, in his teenage years, Julian chucked in his Christian faith and became a zealous advocate for the old Greek and Roman gods. He not only worshipped the traditional gods, he wrote hymns to them and little academic tracts to promote them. When he became emperor in the year 361, at about 30 years of age, he set out to undo the terrific success of Christianity over the previous 40 or 50 years. He decided not to all out persecute the Christians. He'd worked out from uh, earlier Roman history, that tends to cause Christianity to grow, not shrink. He had what he thought was a more effective means. He tried to stop the influence in society of the Christian church. He sacked all Christians who worked in the imperial house and replaced them with uh, pagan officials. He also banned Christian professors from teaching in the great rhetorical academies. And he even stole the entire library of one of the greatest academics of his day, a Christian, his own former professor, George of Cappadocia. He also publicly blamed the Christians for various catastrophes, like uh, a great fire in Antioch, which everyone knew was not the Christians, but he blamed them. And he closed some churches and confiscated certain church property. He mocked them in one letter, saying, Don't the Christians follow that homeless, poor Galilean? What do they need property for? By contrast, he lavished gifts on the pagan temples and sought to revive the pagan priesthood. And it's clear in his first year he had massive success. One interesting thing he did was to create a pagan welfare system in the pagan temples, just like the one that existed in the churches. He knew full well that the charitable work of the Christians was one of the main reasons it grew. Christians uh, tried to free slaves, they fed the poor, they offered free burials, and Julian wanted to beat the Christians at their own game. In one official letter, he wrote these words, the impious Galileans, the Christians, devoted themselves to philanthropy on behalf of the poor. They have their so-called love feast, their hospitality, their service of tables. They have many ways of carrying it out and hence call it by many names. And the result is that they have led very many into their atheism. He calls uh, Christianity atheism because Christianity denies the Greek and Roman gods. But he copied their welfare idea. In another letter uh, we have uh, from a year later, he launched this massive donation to the pagan temples of Galatia, uh, basically Turkey, to try and set up hostels and uh, food service centers uh, to beat the Christians at the game of welfare but it didn't work out. On the 26th of June, the year 363, while on the warpath in the east, uh, heading toward Persia, Julian was struck by a stray arrow and died later that evening. His zealous campaign to elevate paganism and downplay Christianity died with him. And one of our ancient sources says, when he died, he knew it. He apparently clutched 
his wound and howled at the heavens, Thou, O Galilean, hast won. And then he was gone. Julian was the last great swan song of the Greco-Roman religion. The Christian emperors and church leaders that followed in the decade or so after him would not risk another Julian. They were shocked at how suddenly and effectively he was able to wind back the clock on the influence of the church. And they said, never again. Imperial policy from that time on was more pro-Christian and anti-pagan. The era of toleration was gone. Within 30 years of Julian, worship in the pagan temples was outlawed, pagan professors in the academies were banned, and the rest is history. In a strange way then, it wasn't Constantine, the first Christian emperor, who accelerated the demise of the Greek and Roman gods. It was Julian the apostate and the backlash he created. It turns out his dying cry was prescient. Thou, O Galilean, hast won.